Hi friends, it's Miss Cindy, and I'm so excited to share some poetry with you today and teach you how to write your own poem. One of my favorite poets for kids is Shel Silverstein. He writes funny poems and happy poems and sometimes just a little scary poems. We have 22 of his books in our Kalinas Library. This book, the one that's on your screen, this book is one of the ones that gets checked out the most. Kids just love this one. It's called Falling Up. And he does his own illustrations too. Now, here's a poem from Falling Up that I think you will like. It's called Snowball. I made myself a snowball as perfect as could be. I thought I'd keep it as a pet and let it sleep with me. I made it some pajamas and a pillow for its head. And then last night it ran away, but first it wet the bed. <laughs> Did you like that one? I think that's a great one. Now I wanna to talk to you about acrostic poetry. Now, I would like to teach you how to write your own poem, but first I'm gonna to have to show you some examples and then I will explain how you can become a poet too. So acrostic poems are a fun type of poetry. They're, they just have a few small rules. So to begin with, an acrostic is a poem in which the first letters of each line spell out a word or a phrase. The word or phrase can be a name, a thing, whatever you like. When children write acrostics, they will often use their first names and sometimes maybe a friend, a friend's name too. Usually the last letter, or I'm sorry, the first letter of each line is capitalized. And this makes it easier to see the words spelled out vertically down the page. Acrostics are easy to write because they don't need to rhyme and you don't need to worry about the rhythm of the lines. Each line can be as long or as short as you'd like it to be. Now here's a lovely acrostic poem about snow. See how you can see the word snow written vertically down the side on the left? S-N-O-W, that, that spells snow. Now listen as I read it and use your imagination to picture the scene described by the words. Snowflakes softly falling, neatly creating a pattern on evergreen trees while winter softly speaks. When I read that poem, I can see the pine trees in my yard covered in snow. What did you picture in your head? Let's listen to another example. Now, for this example, I wrote an acrostic poem using the letters in my name, C-I-N-D-Y. Now, I wrote them vertically down the left side of my paper, and then I thought of words or phrases that I thought described me that started with those letters. So for C, I used creative because I like to create all kinds of things, art and words and things in the library. I used, for I, I used imaginative because, yep, like to use my imagination all the time. For N, I used nice because I do try to be nice every day. Hopefully I am. I use D, I wrote dependable because I try to always be responsible and dependable. People can depend on me to take care of things. And for why I did young at heart, because even though I'm not as young as you, I still think I like to pretend that I'm young. So that's how I did it, C-I-N-D-Y. And those are the letters. Isn't that easy? You wanna write your own? I thought you might. Let's give it a try. I thought it'd be fun to write about a penguin. Now, the first rule of writing an acrostic po a poem is that it can be an animal, a person, a place, a food, just about anything, or just your name also. So write your word down vertically on the left side of your paper. 
So I wrote penguin, P-E-N-G-U-I-N. -E now I have to brainstorm, or that means to think of some words or phrases that describe what you're writing about. And then you place the words on the lines that begin with the same letter. So you fill in all the lines and you're done. What I came up with, playful. Yeah, I think penguins are pretty playful. Energetic, yeah. Nimble, that means that they can move easily. Graceful, and they are graceful when they swim. Unbelievable, because they're just, just amazing animals. Interesting, because there's so many cool facts about them, and they are nest builders, believe it or not. So there's my acrostic poem about All right, now it's your turn. Tonight or tomorrow, write an acrostic poem and send it to me at cindy.crouch at rrps.net and we'll publish it on the school website and you'll get to be a published poet. Wouldn't that be awesome? Now, before we go, I want to share one last poem with you. And it's a poem that I absolutely love. Here we go. The Perfect Cup of Cocoa. And this one was written by Barbara Vance. And um, it's published in a book called Susie Bittner Was Afraid of the Drain. And that's one of the books that we have in the library also. So here's The Perfect Cup of Cocoa. The Perfect Cup of Cocoa is rich and chocolatey and always warm, but not too hot a steaming chocolate sea. The surfacing is enclosed beneath a thick marshmallow mound, which melts into a gooey cloud without the slightest sound. A whipped cream swirl extends beyond the surface of the cup and chocolate sprinkles add the perfect touch to dress it up. The perfect cup of cocoa is like an old best friend. It's warm, it's sweet, it's such a treat, and yummy till the end. Didn't that make you want a cup of hot chocolate? I know, right? I'm gonna go get one right now. Bye, my young poets. I'll see you soon.